All right, we're here at Charlotte Motor Speedway with Rick Ware uh, with his opportunity to answer people's questions on Facebook. And we had quite a few, actually, a lot of good, interesting questions. Um, let's see, the first one's from Dan Harvey. Dan wants to know, Rick, any exciting news that you can share with us for 2012? Will you be running four cars in the Nationwide? What about Trucks and Cup? Well, Dan, that's a good question. Uh, right now, our plans are to run Tenny, obviously, uh, full-time. We're working uh, with a couple different potential people to run a full-time second nationwide. If that happens, uh, we probably will just limit it to two cars. Uh, we'll, we will be running some trucks, uh, probably at Daytona and a couple of the key events. NASCAR is talking about possibly doing some road courses. Uh, we've got a couple of ringers that we probably would put in for that. Um, and we've announced going to run the 12 race uh, schedule for the championship in the Rolex series. So um, between that, that'll keep us busy in the off season just to get us going. Very good. Mike Albert wants to know, how and when did you decide to get involved with racing and who, and who do you idol in NASCAR? Well, when I was four years old, I was pretty, it was pretty clear cut what I wanted to do for a living. I wanted to, to be a race driver and, and be in racing. Uh, I never really planned on being an owner, and I don't think really any, ever, anybody sets out to do that. But um, uh, circumstances and some injuries kind of necessitated that. Um, you know, growing up uh, on the West Coast, I was uh, always idolized uh, Rick Mears uh, in the Indy cars and the road race stuff. Um, but you know, as time has, has uh, gone on, uh, you know, I really have a, a real appreciation for guys like uh, Andretti that uh, were race drivers when a race driver drove anything, uh, sprint car, Indy car, cup car, 24 hours of Le Mans. That, that, that to me is a little more intriguing, having spent so much time doing another series. Um, you know, that's something you don't see anymore today. Everybody's kind of a specialist. Being a West Coast guy, wasn't Parnelli Jones on your list somewhere? Parnelli Jones too. I used to, I used to be a kid and hang out at Parnelli Jones' shop in uh, Torres, California. Uh, at his Firestone place and, and used to look at all of the, the Viceroy uh, Indy cars and 45,000 cars and the, and, the, and the Baja buggies and it was just it was a great place to grow up at that time. Uh, Ian Stevens says uh, I heard that you guys were coming back with Jeffrey Earnhardt at Talladega in the number one truck. Is that true? That is true. We, uh, we were going to run Jeffrey at Talladega uh, hopefully again uh, possibly at Daytona and another and some more key events. Um, you know, we, we hated that we lost our sponsorship and that deal fell apart. Uh, but we're, you know, we're looking to try to run him uh, as much as we can this year uh, and next year. He'll be running some trucks and nationwide next year. So we're excited to see Jeffrey get back in the number one, uh, sponsored by Point. It's be the first time we've got Point and Jeffrey together, and we're going to do some great things with him as well. Uh, Gina and Chad, I don't know if this is. I need to look out for this one or not. But it says uh, I heard that you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. How does someone get a job with Rick Ware Racing as a PR person? Can you tell us any of your plans for 2012? Obviously, we've already went over the 2012. Yeah, well, you know, it, uh, we've had several interns. Uh, the best thing is I can give you Dave's personal uh, phone number, his, <laughs> his house, uh, give you his wife's cell phone, and you can wear <laughs> him out. But uh, uh, everybody, I don't care if you're racing or in working uh, on either side of the wall or either, either side of the desk, so to speak, a lot of people intern and they commit time. Uh, you know, it's a lot of people uh, think they want to get involved. Uh, only about half of those people really uh, can stomach the amount of travel, the amount of time, and the amount of hours. Um, it's very exciting. You have to be passionate about it because uh, it's just uh, there are more downs than there are ups. But uh, it's very rewarding, and man, it's a uh, it's a passion of business. Very good. I, I feel somewhat safe right now. Uh, <laughs> John Ward asks, "How do you have the time to watch all of your racing teams?" Is there drivers you watch more than others? Um, well, that's a great question. Uh, being a smaller team, though we don't have you know private uh, private air transportation, it, it's tougher to do. Uh, last year, Dave will attest. You know, we had one uh, weekend where we had to go, I think, Ohio and Bristol and I think North Carolina uh, for the modified and arena cross and a nationwide race. It, it's tough. A lot of times, we can't do it all. Um, uh, but, but I love it and uh, we, you know, we have people collecting video and information and we're having to do some follow through on sponsor stuff so unfortunately I can't be at all of it but man I can promise you um, we're texting back and forth and we know what's going on in practice and qualifying in the race and um, you know uh, 
you know, not to try to sound this politically correct, but um, you know, I'm passionate about all my drivers, all my riders. Uh, I've kind of been there, and I see see things through their eyes, and so they're they're uh, they're, they're they're fans of uh, they're fans of uh, of mine, and um, you know, I, I'm excited for them. This is probably my favorite question. Uh, Andy wants to know. What are you doing creatively to attract sponsorship in these hard economic times? Good question. We uh, think about that, talk about it all the time. What we've decided to do um, is we have to go in and give a value added. I don't care what business you're in. Uh, you know, movie theaters have had to do things to get people to buy more popcorn and get to buy more coke. You know, the movies you know sometimes are free if you buy the drinks, etc. We're having to offer more. So for X amount of dollars, we've just had to figure out a way to give them more television time via arena cross races, uh, the, the Rolex series races, uh, the NASCAR. Um, it, it's hard to put together a program and guarantee people wins. Uh, that requires you know big dollars that, that are tough to come by. Uh, sometimes it requires uh, cup drivers that are hard to come by. So we really pride ourselves in being able to deliver a product uh, a certain amount of time on television. Sometimes we do the hand-to-hand -hand combat of, of handing out uh, um, uh, samples, uh, couponing, and uh, collecting information for our database. Uh, so that's really kind of what we've um, done. And you know, we kind of we, we trademark the, the phrase "biggest little team in motorsports," and that kind of came about as a joke. But in reality, it's what we do uh, that makes us different. And it would be harder for somebody to steal a sponsor away just offering a NASCAR. Um, and not being able to offer all the other venues and all the other hours that we are on TV. Uh, Shannon and Sharice Wolf. I don't know if that sounds familiar or not. Have you performed any weddings since your sisters? <laughs> no, I have not. Um, that was uh, that was a very interesting and a fun deal. We I actually uh, I got ordained as a minister, and uh, I, I was happy to do it for my sister. And I married her last year in Bald Head Island, uh, uh, North Carolina. But I have not. Uh, but my wife keeps telling me she wants to renew her vows after our 20th year <laughs> anniversary. So uh, I don't know. I may have to come out of semi-retirement. And all of a sudden, when that happens, the sisters come out of the, the woodwork. Here's a question from Tiffany. How many cool sisters do you have? And do you <laughs> like mayonnaise? <laughs> uh, I got two cool sisters. I love them both, uh, Tiffany and, and uh, Katie. and. Um, Nope, do not like mayonnaise on anything. And you are uh, now a new uncle. I'm a new uncle. My uh, sister Kate um, just had a beautiful little girl, and uh, so I'm a, I'm an uncle now. This is pretty good. Tim Peterson, Rick, are you going to be able to purchase some new Roush chassis to race next year? And any chance of them getting the FR9 motor for your teams for next year? Well, uh, we are actually going to be running an FR9 at Texas. Uh, we got a new car that we built uh, with a new FR9 clip, so we're going to try to step our program up. Uh, you know, baby steps. We have to be careful. Uh, we have to be fiscally responsible this time of the year to make sure we don't, you know, uh, overstep our bounds. But um, to answer your question, we are building complete new cars. Um, we are going to be, um, you know, taking everything to the next level. We, we will be. Uh, we should be at Daytona with some killer pieces with FR9s. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I'm not giving up on this season yet because we're uh, competition has gone up dramatically with Ryan Truex and Blake Cook and, and everybody overall. But we're uh, uh, we're going to step it up, and we've kind of uh, laid the benchmark down, I think, for where people need to be. And um, watch us in Texas. I'm cautiously optimistic about uh, turning some heads. This question we kind of already touched on, but there might be a little piece of here that you can work. Uh, it says, Rick, what are your plans for the teams that you have been starting and parking for you this year to help fund the 15? Any chance of those teams like the 41 running full time in full races next year? Uh, I believe that the 41 or that team, I'm not sure which number we'll call, but, but for 41, for an example, I'm pretty confident we'll probably run a second full time team. And if we can do that, then um, it'll probably uh, fill that gap of income and necessitate that we don't uh, have to do the starting parts. Uh, Tim asks again, what's the story with running the one Chevy this year? Is it strictly for R&D to help compare the Fords that you're in? Uh, that's a good question too. Uh, actually it does. It, it kind of gives us a bar. Uh, the, the, since we don't have the FR9s, the Chevrolet motors we have accelerate really well. Uh, the Ford motors have been fantastic and the Roush 8 stuff, they've just been so great to work with. Uh, but we had some Chevrolets left over when the deal fell apart with Jeffrey Earnhardt. 
So we, we had to use those up because they, they were bought and paid for and we were responsible to, um, you know, to continue to purchase what, uh, what uh, motors we had left from Earnhardt Childress. Uh, so we use those on our starting park to make sure that um, uh, you know, we can have four cars at the track. Uh, and um, you know, we have the ability to run more Chevrolets if we need to. Right now we're really concentrating on getting Ford that Ricky of the Year Championship though and continue our relationship with Ford. Uh, Mike Tarabay asks me this all the time, and I want to put it to you. What's the latest with Floyd? Latest with Floyd? Well, man, it, that's, a, that's a work in progress. We, uh, uh, we finally got Floyd to a driver's school. Uh, we're, we're working, you know, there, there are many aspects and funding as part of it, and, you know, Floyd's got a book coming out. Uh, he has a new, he has a new uh, um, over-the-counter, uh, make sure you get this right, um, well, I don't even know the right word for me. He, he has an over the over the counter over the counter steroid type um, product uh, that um, he's getting ready to launch, and, and the timing of that is is critical with the race program. So there's been a couple of hiccups on the on the funding and promotional side, but we're we're working hard to try to get him in. He's a great guy. It'd be a big step from pedaling your way to, to horsepower to exactly. driving one. Exactly. Uh, so, in case anybody knows, we're talking about Floyd Landis, who was uh, world Two, famous. 2006 Tour de France champion. Right. Uh, Teammates with Landis, or with uh, Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong. Uh, Mike Hogg, what do you think has been the biggest factor in making the teams advance through the season to the point that all four cars qualify easily every week? Uh, I got to put, you know, our, our, you know we, we've stepped up at the shop. Uh, I have to say, you know, the team has really worked hard. Um, that's kind of such a cliche, but they really have. But I tell you what, I gotta, I gotta throw it uh, to Timmy Hill. The kid's 18 years old. Um, it's hard to believe he's not spun out one time at any circle track all year long. We told him at the beginning of the year, if he doesn't wreck cars, we can continue to make the cars better. And Timmy's actually raced all these cars at one time. We've got a couple of favorites we're fine tuning. But Timmy has been the biggest help uh, by not wrecking our stuff. So when we get back to the shop, we can make it a little bit better every single time. So kudos to Tammy. He, he, he's helped us be able to do that. Now, I'm going to ask a question uh, that nobody posed on Facebook and let you kind of explain it. Um, everybody wants to know why the three start in parks. That was never our role model. That was never our business model this year. Um, explain how when we lost Fuel Doctor at the beginning of the year, how being having to come up with creative ways to, to make money to fund this deal, how, how we got to where we are? Well, when we, when we lost the sponsor, uh, it takes a certain amount of dollars uh, every single day to take care of the, the crew, uh, the overheads, uh, like, like any business. And, uh, you know, we got, we got more people uh, on staff now, and a lot of the people count on us to, to, to pay their bills and, and to make a living. So the easy thing would have been to kind of uh, step back and punt. Uh, let people go. Uh, I really didn't want to do that. We fought really hard not to let people go. And in fact, we've actually added more people. The starting park is, is, is a necessity of, um, it takes so much money to race each race. Uh, and the starting park money goes to help uh, fund Timmy. We, we've been on a real tight budget. Uh, again, Timmy not wrecking has allowed us to do things. Um, but it takes those cars to make up the difference. Fortunately, uh, Point has come on board. We've got some great things going on. Um, uh, we're going to be able to, to grow with them, I believe, and you, you may see a lot less of the start and parking. Um, it, it's, a, it's, tough. It's, it's, it's tough business, and uh, a lot of people don't understand it, um, but I equate it to, um, you know, we're in business to, 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 to pay our bills and to make a living, and sometimes uh, there's dirty work in any business that you have, and, and as racers, you, you go to race, but um, and this allows us to race. I know a lot of people will say, well, since you're an owner, obviously you're loaded or you can bring money from your other companies. People don't realize that you don't have another company. This is our business is to go out and right. race. Our, our, you know, we're a race team. That's all we do. You know, we, we've tried, we're, you know, we're working on developing products, uh, which we have with, with companies in the past that also bring in additional dollars. But this is our core program. Um, you know, racing is all I've ever, ever really done. It's all I've ever wanted to do. Um, it, it's all consuming. So it's, um, you know, everything has to be accountable uh, and, you know, everything goes into the big black hole, so to speak. And, and uh, we've done some things with the Rolex that races at different times of the season and part of the off season. 
uh, that we can actually keep everybody busy. So we're not going to stop at all. I mean, you know, we're going to eat some turkey at Thanksgiving. We got to finish building our Rolex cars. We got to finish testing them. Uh, prepare for that. At the same time, we got to be at um, Daytona again in February. So, um, you know, we love racing, and we're going to do whatever it takes, you know, morally and ethically, to keep on racing. Now, I'm going to ask a question uh, because I've, I've known you for, for several years. You've done everything where you've won your own championship um, road racing. You've sat on the podium at Daytona in the Supercross. You've dealt with X Game excellence. You've, you've, you've done different championships, arena cross championships. You won a championship with Tim Brown in the Bowman Modifieds. What has been your... your if you could just take one moment and everything that you've done in racing, what's the one moment that, that you'd want to to be able to, re to remember or that, that you like the most? That's it, tough. You know, I, um, uh, you know, you, you always think, you know, you, when you're young and you're, you're racing, it's all about winning and, and championships. And, and um, you know, I think I'll always remember the first time you know, I ran my first NASCAR race, the professional race um, in 1983. And we finished third. Um, in the Saturday race, which used to be a Grand American before it was Nationwide or Bush, and that was I felt it was an accomplishment. And, you know, I remember the first time I ever went to Daytona; it was just unbelievable. And um, you know, um, I don't know. I have so many uh, great memories. Um, I actually, uh, I'm really hoping that I, I haven't even uh, scratched the surface yet. I'm really counting on uh, what it's going to feel like to win a, a championship in a, a NASCAR series and Nationwide with Timmy Hill. Um, and uh, do even more great things next year. So I'm hoping that that uh, everything that I've done in the past is is going to be replaced with something even even better as an owner. It's uh, a little bit tougher to do because you know driving is such a passion, and if you drive, uh, it, it's, it, it's, it fulfills a different need. But um, um, but you know we may uh, we may be doing a little of that next year if things go my way. So we may yep. go, we may we may come out of uh, retirement for a race or two. 24 hours perhaps you, you finish it as a team owner you finish 11th in your first time yep. there yep. Yep. now all of a sudden you went from a Porsche to a Mustang and, and you're doing a lot of really nice stuff with this car what what are your expectations with with the Grand Am are you expecting to come in and knock the doors off people do you think it's gonna be a huge learning curve what, what, what would be gratifying to you at the end of a Grand Am season in the Grand Am season uh, I, I want to be contending for a championship you know, now that may be we finish second, third, fourth, uh, but I, I want to be a player. I, I'm convinced that we can get on the podium. I think that's a, an, an attainable um, goal. Um, you know, I, I would like, and this may sound crazy, you know, my goal, my personal goal, selfishly, since I, since I don't need to drive anymore and I'm a car, what I want to do is I want to sit on the pole for the 24 hours. Um, that would make a statement uh, about our team and, and Ford. Um, you know, we're the only team in all of Grand Am, uh, Daytona Prototype, or GT that build their own chassis and race them. So uh, we got a, a huge learning curve, and it's going to be a huge learning curve. But I think by the, the middle of the season, I think we'll have a grasp, and I think we'll be very competitive. And, and I think with a little bit of luck with the people that we have on our side, I think it's possible that we can uh, shoot to win for a race. And that's why we're doing that. Uh, you know, it's a little bit easier to uh, put the pieces together to, to say we have a chance to win a Rolex GT race as opposed to having to beat Carl Edwards and Kyle Busch in a nationwide. That, that's a pretty big feat to do. I appreciate you taking the time to come in here. I know we're getting ready to go racing. So uh, everybody keep bringing in the questions. We'll uh, we'll take every chance we can to uh, corner him down, strap him down, and have some uh, questions and answers for you guys. Keep them coming. Appreciate all the support, you guys. Give me some more questions. Take, take care and God bless.